Let me tell you what happened in my life. After the Super Bowl, uh, I guess many of you watched the Super Bowl. When the Super Bowl was over, that was a long day for me. I was really tired. I was looking forward to having a good night's rest. At 4.30, I woke up in the morning terrified at what I had dreamed. I was absolutely petrified. I don't know when the last time I've ever had such an experience as I had in my soul. It probably would take me deep into my childhood. You know, with the boogie bears and all that. But it so terrified me that I woke up at 4.30 in the morning weeping at what I had seen. I couldn't control my weeping. So I thought after a while, I would do the man thing and get up and see if I could wake it off and shake it. So I got up and I walked around and eventually shook it down a little bit. And I thought, maybe I can go back to sleep. But when I got back to my bed, I fell on my knees. I began to pray that what I saw would never be real. I stayed a long time there. Eventually got up and went to sleep. After a word of prayer and a little bit of composure, I'm going to tell you what I saw that I hope has changed my life forever in Moody, Alabama. Let's pray. Well, our Heavenly Father, my soul was terrified. And what I saw in Moody, Alabama, St. Clair County, Alabama, and the United States. I hope from my experience, I'll be a better pastor, certainly a better evangelist, and be more concerned about the people who I see in Moody every day walking around now that I've identified them. I pray, Father, you would share with the people through this sermon what you have shared with me. In Jesus' name, amen. What I saw that night that terrified me <clears throat> what appeared to be a bunch of people dead, but walking around. <clears throat> the, it wasn't a few people, it was a lot of people. I looked really hard to see if I could identify anybody. I couldn't except by ages. A lot of young people middle-aged people and elderly people were in that group. I thought, what am I looking at? The spirit in me said, zombies. The title of my lesson today, zombies. The only way I could define the people that I actually saw in the English language were zombies. For me, a zombie is a walking dead. 
somebody who is physically alive and spiritually dead. I was overwhelmed by that. My spirit in me ask, where are you looking from? I thought, where am I looking from? I said, yeah. I said, well, I'm looking in my mind. I'm looking from inside the house to people outside my house. Oh. He said, you're talking about your house in Moody? I said, yes, sir, I'm talking about my house in Moody. Well, we must be looking at Moody people. Uh, well, I guess. Why are you weeping? I really don't know why, Father. It's just that what I saw terrified my soul. Well, why would it terrify your soul? Because they were zombies. They were the walking dead. He said, well, how would you interpret that as a pastor, as a minister? I said I would interpret that, <clears throat> that these people are physically alive and spiritually dead. And he said, you're absolutely right. I sent you to Moody not for, not for brick and mortar, but for flesh and blood. Take your focus off brick and mortar and put your focus on flesh and blood. I said, well, all right. I can do that. I can do that. He said, do you realize that you have been in the middle of a revival in Moody, Alabama since 2020? I said, are you kidding me? I'm in the middle of a revival and didn't recognize it? How was that possible? Watch this. Maybe you and my congregation don't know it either. Because we've been like zombies ourselves, spiritually speaking. I said, how is that possible? That I wouldn't recognize a revival if, if I was involved in one. How is it possible I wouldn't know it? I've worked for Billy Graham for four years. I know revival when I see it. <laughs> he said, well, since 1920, since 2020, 2020, we have had baptism through conversion in this church every month of our existence. Do you have any idea what an enormous thing that is? We have had baptisms every month in this church since 2020. We have not missed a month. It didn't matter whether it was COVID or not COVID, we didn't miss a month. But I'm gonna tell you what we did miss. We missed a revival in our midst. We have baptized 110 People, 110 people in Moody, Alabama since 2020. Do you realize what an enormous thing that is? How is it possible that we've been asleep? Just think if the rest of us had been awake, what that number could have been. 
We live in the midst of zombies. Physically alive and spiritually dead. And a lot of these young people sitting up here with us today are part of that group. And I am so thankful for you. And I see you in a completely different light. You are part of a movement of God. You are part of a movement of God in Moody, Alabama. I've been in this thing a long time, people. I've been in this stuff a long time. This is a phenomenal experience that we've got. I said to him, what, what, what's, what, what, is, what are you trying to tell me? Well, he's trying to tell me I'm in the midst of a spiritual revival and didn't pay any attention to it. How sad is that as a pastor? <clears throat> so we've, we've made some moves in our church to try to keep up with what's going on around us. Bringing a young guy in to work with Willie. I said, the Lord, well, I had no idea that all that was going on. I mean, I knew that people were being saved, and I knew that I wasn't paying attention to the lives that were being changed. I mean, some of you I know, I know personally, and some I don't. I'm going to get to know all of you personally. You're part of a great movement of God out in Moody, Alabama. I don't know if you know that or not. You should go to the baptisms. When Willie calls for a baptismal service, those of you that have been baptized, you should, be, you should come and embrace these people, boys and girls, young men and young women who are being saved. You should embrace them. You're part of a great moving of God in Moody, Alabama. And we've been sound asleep. So I said to God, give me some understanding. So here's that piece of paper. At the top of it, write zombies, because now you know what I'm talking about. Zombie. All right? I know some of you probably don't have pencils, but... Yeah, right, just, if you, don't have a, you want a pencil, lift your hand, and they'll give you a pencil. I want you to tell um, God to, he, he, he I, I was going to go back to bed. He said, get up and write down. Now write down what I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you exactly what he told me. This is what he told me. He told me six things. Of why he started a revival in Moody. And it's going to seem strange when you hear it. The first thing he told me, everything deals with one. The first thing he told me, we're on one planet. I know. He said, you're on one planet. You're on a, a, a wonderful universe, but you're on one planet that's more important than the whole universe. You're on one planet. And that planet's called heaven and earth, Genesis 1-1. I wrote it down. I knew that, but I wrote it down. He told me to write this down. I kind of had, I kind of got tickled when he said that, when he said, I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, write this down. And I thought, hmm, that's probably be a gay question. <laughs> yeah, I got a sense of humor out of all the misery I was in. He said, there's only one planet. That planet's called Earth. Technically, he said, it's called the heavens and the Earth. Genesis 1.1. And the entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, 
is about that heaven and earth that's going to be changed in Revelation, the 21st chapter, to a new heaven and new earth. Think about that little planet called Earth that you and I live on. We just don't live at Moody. We live on planet Earth. And that's a big deal. In the big scheme of things, that's a big deal. And that's the importance of the Bible. How would I know that this planet is greater than any planet out there because God said it and he gave it a name. He called it the new, he called it the heaven and the earth. And when he goes to Revelation, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to restore that heaven and earth into a new heaven and earth. Think about what that must going to be like. And if you're born again, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ hung on that cross for our, our Adamic sin, was buried and raised from the dead, you will not only understand the importance of this heaven and earth and why you're on it, but you will also understand when you get to the new heaven and earth why you're there. Won't that be wonderful? You see, we're people of the same planet. You know, everybody's talking about outer space and what there might be out there. I'll tell you what's out there. It's outer space. What's here is planet Earth. Planet Earth, of all of that's out there, is the most important. And we live on it. We didn't choose it. It was chosen for us. The second thing he told me to write down on my paper was one world. There's one planet, and on that planet is one world. One planet, and on that one planet is one world. And if you want to know about that one world that makes this planet unique is creation. Creation. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and day seven. What makes this creation of this planet so unique for you and I is that on the first day, he separated darkness and light so that we could understand that God is light and in him there is no darkness. You, listen, apart from Christ, you live in darkness. In Christ, you live in light. You are said to be, you are called to be children of the light and not children of the darkness. When Christ came, he saved you out of the dominion of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of light. Acts 26, 18. Colossians 1.13. We're all part of one planet. We're all part of one world. One world. In day one, he separated the, the light from the darkness. In day two, he separated the waters from the earth so that man could be comfortable living on it. On day three, if you remember, on day three, we, we have... Uh, Land, we have the visibility of land, vegetation on this, uh, now on the land, he's going to put vegetation, plants, fruit trees. On day four, which is an important day, he puts the expanse in the sky. He puts an expanse between, so that we have separate heavens. We have a third heaven where God lives, a second heaven where space is, and a, a first heaven where we are and birds fly in airplanes. He developed a solar system so that we could have seasons and climates, weather reports. That's day four. That's where the calendar comes in, a solar day. On day five, he created uh, fish, he created uh, fi fish and land animals, uh, birds fish and birds. On day six, he created land animals, both domestic and wild. 
and mankind. On day six, we were created. All this other creation was to put us in a good place in our life. You know, every day with Jesus, winter day before. Did you know that everything that God has created was to make you comfortable? But here we are as zombies. How is that possible? So he said, there's a third one. There's the third one. There's only one mankind. We have one planet with one world with one mankind. We're not, we don't have many mankinds. There are not many. There, all this racial stuff, that's from the devil. It's not from God. We are all one mankind. The, another way of saying it, we are, we are all of the same blood. We're all one mankind. God never intended. Listen, the only thing that separates mankind, mankind, is in Genesis 10, it is national boundaries, language boundaries, and then boundaries around a nation, borders. It's exactly what Genesis 10 teaches us. We're all one mankind. What separates us are our national identities. Nothing else. We're all one mankind. And we've got to understand that. What makes us unique? Everybody in the world is all mankind. It doesn't matter. What makes us unique is that we were created on day six. We were created in the image and likeness of God. We were made in the... None of the rest of the animals or anything else was made that way. They were made according to species. Dogs are dogs and cats are cats and yada yada. But what makes humans unique is that we were created like God. Genesis 1, 26, 27. We were created in the image according to the likeness of God. That's a unique, wonderful trait. Listen to this. Write this down. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. It says that there are two federal heads of, of mankind, of the human race. Two federal heads of the human race. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says there's two federal heads of the human race. Here's what he says in 45. He says one head is the first Adam. That's the one in Genesis, who were Adam and Eve, who were told not to eat of the tree of knowledge in the day you eat, dying, you will die. You will die a spiritual death separated from God, and then you'll die a physical death. That's how you get the zombie idea. I mean, when I, when I told the Lord what I saw was zombies, he went, how, did, how was that possible? Theologically, I understood that. I said, well, that's because they're physically alive and spirit, they're spiritually uh, dead and physically alive. Man, I knew that. The first Adam and the last Adam, the last Adam, federal head of the human race, is Jesus Christ. We're all born into the human race through Adam. And his sin of Genesis 2.17 is passed on to us. Listen to this. Listen to what Paul said in Romans 5.12. This is why you're zombies and need to be saved and can be saved. Listen to this. Wherefore, as by one man Adam, sin entered into the world, and sin death was passed upon all mankind. Think about that. Are you physically alive? Yeah. When did that occur? Birth. When will that end? Death. Well, how do I get out of Adam and into Christ? Listen to me. Only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. He's the truth. Huh? 
I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And you will be a zombie. You are a zombie and will always be a zombie. You'll be the walking dead unless you believe that Jesus died for your sins. To remove that status from your life was buried and raised from the dead on the third day. When you believe that, you will give up the zombie life for the spiritual life in Christ. And there is no other way. That's why he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one, no one comes any other way. What is interesting to me is both of them are called Adams. A-D-A-M. There's the first Adam and there's the last Adam. And the last Adam is our Savior. Think about that. One planet with one world, with one mankind. Watch this now. With one fallen humanity. One fallen humanity. Mankind is physically born in a spiritual state of separation from God. There is no way back except through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is no way back. You say, well, what kind of God would do that? That one, one that loves you. Listen to me. Let me show you how much God loves you. Because this is a status you're in. Listen to this. For God so loved the world. We've talked about that one world of one mankind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you know there are 25 English words there? Do you know what the middle word is? Son. 12 up and 12 down. You know what the first 12 verses tell you? It tells you your status without Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Then he tells you the solution in the world that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Without the Son, you have nothing. Is John 3.16. You're a walking zombie. Physically alive and spiritually dead. The message we carry to Moody, Sinclair County, Alabama, the United States of America is the importance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Religion won't get you there. It didn't say, Jesus didn't say the way, the truth, and life is through religion. Do good. Be fair to all people. All those are good things. They won't save you. Only thing that will save you from the fallen humanity that we are all in is Jesus Christ. The message we must carry to Moody as a church is the gospel of Jesus Christ. How do we change the state we're in? I'll tell you, I can hardly watch television anymore without crying, weeping over children who are... Who are who are being so misled and the church is silent. What adults are doing to our children is an abomination. Is an abomination. 
one planet, with one world, with one mankind, and that one mankind starts out fallen. So here's what God did. God sent him one Savior. One Savior. There's not many. There's not two. There's not three. There's not four. There's not a half a dozen. There's one Savior. One person that can save you out of your sin and the mess of your life. Only one person that can dramatically change your life from being a zombie to be somebody that is alive in Christ, a new creation. Paul talks about a new creation. I want to read this to you. Write this down. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. We always quote 17. We probably should do the whole thing. But here it is. I want to read it to you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. 17 most people are familiar with. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, you believe that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. A new creation. A new story about creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 is a whole new story about the old creation story. A new creation. Watch this now. Old things have passed away, and behold, new things have come. Are you living in... Listen, here's a zombie, gets saved, and now he lives in a new creative form with the old things gone, and everything in his life is brand new. I got saved in, when I was 21. That's been light years ago. And I'm going to tell you something. Every day is a new day in Christ. Even when you think that you've about heard everything that God has to say to you, he awakens you at 4.30 in the morning, makes you get up and read things and weep over the story of fallen humanity. God has shaken my world mightily. Listen to verse 18. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Gave who this ministry? Church, church. Gave who this ministry? Church. Who did he give this ministry of reconciliation to? Us. Usins. I didn't misread that. I didn't misread that and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And he says, namely, let me explain this to you, he says. Namely, let me explain this to you. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. What a great message we have to take to Moody. St. Clair County, the state of Alabama, the United States of America. But you know what? You don't, you have to do it one by one. You come to the kingdom one by one, don't you? You can't, go, I, can't I can't walk out of my house and preach the gospel message in, in the community I live and expect everybody that's in the community in the housing area I live to be saved, right? If I could do that, I've already done that. Everybody who lives in Arbor would be saved. Let me tell you, if I thought that was so, I would have done it. That's not how it's done, people. It's one bringing one into the kingdom. Now listen to me. Those who know math, if one, if everyone who gets saved leads another one to Jesus Christ, think, think about the math in a year. That's how God works. That's, match, that's math miracle. 
Look at verse 19. Therefore God was in Christ reconciling word unto himself, not counting their trespasses against them. What a wonderful, what a wonderful message we have for that. And he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Right? Listen to what he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Christ, in Adam, he says, in Adam all die. They're physically alive and spiritually dead. In Christ, in Christ, we are all made alive. In Adam, we're dead. In Christ, we're made alive. Let me close. We have one planet, <laughs> right? With one world, with one mankind, one mankind fallen, right? One fallen man, one savior. Watch this now. One church, it's the church of Jesus Christ. It's not Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterians, Wally Wally. It's none of that stuff. There's only one church of Jesus Christ. When you get saved, you become part of that church. Galatians, Galatians 3.27 and 1 Corinthians 12.13. Galatians 3.27 and 1 Corinthians 12.13. You become part of the church of Jesus. The moment you accept the gospel of Christ, you become a member of the church of Jesus Christ. Your name is sealed in the book of life, which will be read at the great white throne judgment. Now watch. We have one church, one universal church of Jesus Christ in the world, listen to me, with one mission. And that's where God has got me. That's where he got me. With one mission. What do you think that one mission is? Willie? I want you to read Matthew. Now I know you know it. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. With one mission. And we all need to be on this mission. 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28. Will he have it a minute? Now, if there's any one man that really knows this verse, it'd be Willie. He knows all these. Yeah, I'm ready. Stand up and read that thing for me. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Where? On heaven and on earth. Whoa. Go therefore, that's a command. <clears throat> make disciples of that's all a, the nations. Make command. Uh, go, go is not the command. Make disciples is though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Make disciples. You got to do what? Make disciples. Wait a minute. All. What do I have to do to make disciples? The gospel. Wait a minute. What do I have to do? Read again. Go. I got to go, don't I? I got to go, which is a participle. I got to go. Then I'm given the command. Now read it. Go. Make disciples of all the nations. Baptize. How many? All. Is it some of them? No, all of them. All right. All right. <clears throat> well, make disciples. Listen to me. Some of the schools. So, schools. Huh? All. Some of the schools. We care about them, don't we, Willie? Really? We want Leeds. We want Moody. We want St. Clair County. We want Springville. We want Pell City. We want Asheville. We want them all, don't we, Willie? Really? Yes, we do. We want them all. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Go ahead. All right. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, one guy out here has stuck his head into discipling with the gospel of Jesus Christ and Moody. We all need to do that. We all need to do that. Send your young people to divine fitness. And you young people that are sitting in this church being trained, lead people to the Lord. Take them to Willie. Lead them into the Lord and then take them to Willie and get them involved in some Bible study. Get them involved in growing. Get them involved in concern in their high school. The athletes you're with, if you're on a baseball team, be concerned about the guys on your baseball team. Influence them for the Lord, not them, away, not them influence you away from the Lord. Yeah. So you get a target on you, so what? That's what it means to be in Christ in the world. We have got to be better than we've been at the close of our first year out here. We have been setting in a fire going on for Christ. We have been setting in the midst of a revival in Moody, Alabama, where we have not failed to baptize converts to Christ every month of our existence out here, 20 and 21. All of 20 and all of 21, and now we're into 22, now we're into 23. And we need to be about this business. We're among the walking dead. It should break our hearts. I never want to have to go through that dream ever again. I don't want it. We need to rescue the perishing. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, and we need to be those sons that are sent to the broken homes, to the broken children. And we are filled with broken children today. in our high schools, in our middle schools, down to the little kids. So, Father, you asked me what I wrote down. I told you verbatim what you told me to write down. And I told the church. What is the work? Why did you send us to Moody? It is so clear in my soul. We have been sitting in the midst of a revival and have not paid attention to it. You've set Moody on fire. Not just a dump, but the spiritual side of Moody. Our eyes are wide open to this. And we want to, we want to begin, become engaged in it. Not just one person, but all of us. And bringing people who need to study the Word of God into our presence. And sharing the gospel with those who need to, to be saved. Who want to be saved, just don't know how. Encourage our hearts, Father. Encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen.